You're too late, boys. I'm a closing. Uh, we'll give you a hand. You're Jerry Blake. That's right. Now listen, I don't want to know funny stuff. Uh, funny stuff? No, it's more like simple business. You're going to pay me 50 pounds a month. Oh, I, I know until now you've been paying Frank Romano, but that's all over. Jerry's moving in. My hair tonic's much better, Tony. And cheaper. A pound a bottle. I'll put you down for 50 bottles a month. Have you got that? Get out of my shop. Oh. Go on, Tony! <laughs> All right, Lefty. Spooky! Voice city spooky! Don't know what that meant, Tony. But it sounded rather rude. Okay, Jerry. Sporky, solo sporky. What's he on about? He says somebody wrecked his shop. What a chair they pulled right out of the floor. Hundreds of pounds it will cost. 20 years I have had that shop, Frank. No, nothing. Ruined. Who did this, Tony? Jerry play. Are you sure? I, I pay you for protection. I expect to get it. Blake's finally done it. He's moved into our territory. When did this happen, Tony? Just an hour, ten minutes. I was closing up and they walk in. Okay, Sally, off you go. Come on, go home. I'll take care of this. Go on. Take care of it. Yeah. Tell me how. Who pays it for my shop? I'll take care of it, Tony. You go home. I'll see you. Bye-bye. What are you going to do, Frank? You don't let Blake move into our territory? You've got to teach Blake a lesson, Frank. We're really fixing. Yeah, rumble. Frank, he's just begging for it. A real carver. Well, if he's begging for it, we'll give it to him, won't we? Yeah. Off you go then, Weasel. Get the lads here tomorrow at noon, OK? You make me sick. What are you talking about? You're worse than a bunch of five-year-old kids. I can't just stand by and let Blake's boys squeeze me out, can I? So you have a carve up with the Blake boys, and what happens? Some of you get beaten up and some of you go to jail, and for what? For a few bottles of hair tonic for a backstreet barber. You know your trouble, Frank. You don't use your brains. Well, I've had enough. Weasel? Yeah, Frank. Forget about getting the boys together. Hey, Frank. Who wears the pants in your family, you or your wife? Do you want to argue with me, Sammy? Oh, come on, answer me. Do you want to argue? Anybody else? OK. I decide what we do, and when I decide, I'll tell you. You'll deal with Jerry Blake my way, when I say so. But I don't know who done it. Honest, Mr. Browning. If I do, I tell you. But I don't. You're lying, Tony. No, honest. Was it Jerry Blake? Who's he? You know damn well who Jerry Blake is. Look, Mr. Matzo, we're trying to help you. Do you understand that? But I told you, I come to work this morning, I find my shop wreck. That, that's all I know. Tony, if you're afraid, we'll protect you. We'll have a constable watch your shop, walk home with you at night. Sure. This constable, he walks home with me for a week, or two weeks, maybe three. But not for the rest of my life, huh? They wait. One night when I'm alone, Suddenly, I got no teeth left. My arm is broken. No, uh, I'm a sorry, Mr. Bailey. I, I don't know nothing about who wrecked my shop. All right, Tony, you can go. Grazie. Commander Gideon. Yes, Tony? I, I know you tried to help me. I'm a sorry. Ah, see what I'm up against. Well, that's why I'm here. 
The Bank Boys and the Romano Gang are the biggest problem I've got in this division. How many shops are paying protection? I've no idea. They're all like Tony. They won't talk. All of them? All that we've asked. Well, ask them again. It's a waste of time. Look, Browning, we're going to break this thing. We're serving notice on Messrs. Blake and Romano as from now. Now, come on. What is it now? What's bothering you? All right, I'll tell you. Hmm? I'm fed up. Fed up? Yeah. With this dreary little flat and the way we live. Well, what's the matter with the way we live? You ask for anything, you get it. Now, what, what could you want, me? Eh? A future. <laughs> what? A future. Where will we be in five years, ten years? Well, we'll be nowhere, that's what. This Tupney hate me protection racket. By the time you've done the share outs and everything, you may as well be working in a garage. It takes time to build up an organization. <sighs> organization. So it makes you feel big to be the boss and have everyone lick your boots. But if you intend to spend the rest of your life with that scum you call an organization, you can say goodbye to me. No, that's enough. I mean it. You walk out on me and see what happens. What are you going to do, beat me up? The day you lay a hand on me, I'll be out of here so quick you won't see me for dust. If you just tell me, I'd do anything you say. But you've got to tell me what you want. I want to set up Henry. Who? Henry Waldo. But you uh, mean that uh, little bank clerk you used to go out with? Yeah. I met him the other day in the street. He uh, doesn't know I'm married. What's that supposed to mean? Well, he's still crazy about me. I can tell. What do you mean, set him up? Well, he's got a new job at the bank. Hmm? Head office. You know what it is? Hmm? He burns money. <laughs> you what? Yeah. Paper money gets worn out. The bank send it to head office. They cut it up and burn it. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, Henry knows when these shipments are. If I could get him to tell me, we could, uh... Do you think you could get him to, um... Yes, I think so. How far would you have to go? He's only got to look at me, hasn't he? Frank? Hmm? Let me make a date with him for tonight. Yeah, right, you go ahead. Waldo here. Waldo! Yes, I'd love to see you again, Henry. Well, tonight would be fine. Yeah, I know it. In Dean Street, isn't it? I'll, I'll, I'll meet you there at about um, seven o'clock. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. Wonderful. All right. Goodbye. <coughs> I've never seen the boys looking so good. Well, they're feeling big, aren't they? They've moved into Romano's territory and they hasn't even said a word. Hi, right, right, Jerry. You know what? I just seen Lola Romano with some old guy in Soho. About 40 he was. Really? She was hanging on his arm and laughing. They come out of some foreign restaurant. Frank's losing everything. First his territory, now his wife. It was a lovely meal, Henry. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know a lot about those sort of things. French menus, wines. It makes me feel sort of... Well, you don't mean that I embarrass you, do you? Well, I haven't had much of an education, Henry. Oh, darling. If only you knew the pleasure it gives me just to be with you. I feel the same way. Well, then why? Why what? Well, a year ago, you suddenly said you, you couldn't see me anymore. It just wouldn't work. It can't. But why not? I honestly don't understand you. Oh, Henry, don't be silly. Can you really see me mixing with those people you work with at the bank? Oh, that's ridiculous. Don't laugh at me. Laugh at you? I'm just not good enough for you, Henry. Oh, darling. 
I love you. Do you, Henry? Do you? I want you to marry me. We started expanding. There's no going back. Right? Right. Frank's chicken. We're moving into his territory as far south as Theopold Street. Larry, you start laying the groundwork, chatting up the merchants. Yeah. Lefty cowboy and we're going to West Gar Street. Restaurants and... Yeah, the caps are the easiest. In a week, I want Frank Romano... One week. I want him so far off base that, as in the words of the poet, he won't know what hit him. All right, meeting's adjourned. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty pounds. Thank you, Mr. Sideman. Don't thank me. Just go. I don't think he likes us. I wonder why. It's just a simple business proposition, Mr. Sideman. Yes, I wonder. I've been hearing rumours. Oh? People are saying Frank Romano's on the run. That's a lie, Sideman. Yes, I forget you heard it. All right, then, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. You reckon Mr. Sideman needs a little persuasion? Now, look, no trouble. I paid, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. But remember one thing, Sideman. Frank Romano's boss. Boss of what? Jerry, I'm warning you. This is Frank's territory. We're being warned. Isn't that nice? Really consider it. I'm real scared. Can you make it? Please. Sammy, come on. It's just out of the corner. Sammy, try. I can't. I can't. What did you say? I said I loved him very much, but I'd have to think it over. How long does it take before we get some sort of action around here? Not long, don't worry. Have another date with him tonight. What do you want? I had to see you. I told you never to come here. Do you? Now, come on, what's on your mind? Let's have it. Jerry Blake just knifed Sammy Mason. Where? Sideman's restaurant. We were collecting, and Jerry and Cowboy came in, tried to take over. Frank, you've got to do something. Yeah, OK. All right, Chick, you get the boys together in two hours. I'll see them at the club, all right? Frank, hmm? you better make it good. Right. We're down in two minutes. Come in. Just had a call from Browning. It started. What has? The gang war. One of the Romano boys, Sammy Mason was knifed by Jerry Blake. Where did this happen? At a restaurant in Barford Street. The proprietor was a witness. Browning's holding Blake at division for an identity parade. I don't want to miss this one. I thought you wouldn't, because of the door. Good. Let's go. Please look at each man carefully, Mr. Sideman. If you recognize one of them, please touch him lightly on the shoulder. Simon's scared. I suppose you can't blame him. What about Sammy Mason? Twenty? Tough? Mixed up? He's in a critical condition. Yeah, but he's made a statement. No? 
You mean you wouldn't say he was knifed in? Not a word. He won't talk. Bring in Frank Romano. We'll see if he'll talk. Now, get this. I do the thinking and I give the orders. We'll be ready to tangle with the Blake boys. We will, but we won't do anything until I say so. Any idea when that'll be, Frank? When I'm ready, I'll tell you. Some of the boys are getting a bit nervy. What, meaning you? And others. Any of you boys tired of being in this bunch? Well, come on, answer me. How about you, Duke? Do you want to get out? Not me, Frankie. I'm with you all the way. You know that. Frank! No, squad car's just turning to sleep. Don't try that again, Duke. If you think you can pull a stroke on me, you're mad. <laughs> Are you a member of this club, sir? It's my membership card. Detective Chief Inspector. <laughs> you Frank Romano? That's right, yeah. Would you care to take a little walk? Where? Where? Division. Why? Friendly chat. Are you charging me? No. Strictly voluntary. Right. All right, I'll come with you. Sensible. Now, look. I know all about you since you were nine years old, so don't you start pulling the wool over my eyes. I thought this was supposed to be a friendly chat. Have you been collecting from Sideman's restaurant? You're kidding. Never more serious in my life. Look, I keep law and order in my club. If one of the members collects, that's good business, but it's not my business, is it? And don't you get fresh with me, Sonny. You frighten me. And if you or one of your boys so much as goes to an amber light, you're for it, you understand that? Persecution, is that it? You call it what you like. Why don't you work me over with your rubber truncheon? You'd enjoy that, wouldn't you? Get out of here. Thank you very much. And I warned you. You step out of line once and we'll get you. All right? Does this mean that you'll marry me? It means I won't. But why? Henry, I think you think I'm some sort of a goddess or something. Well, I'm not. I want things. Things that can only be bought with money. Lots and lots of money. Darling, I'm never going to be well off, never. Henry, be sensible. You handle thousands and thousands of pounds. Money that's just going to be cut up and burned. You're not seriously suggesting that I... Yes, I am. You're mad. I mean it. We could help you. We? My brother, Frank. He's got friends. Men that could organize it. If you'll tell us when there's a shipment. <laughs> this is some sort of a joke. Henry, how many bank robbers have ever been caught? We could do it. I know we could. You don't know what you're saying. We could go away. To the Bahamas or Brazil. Somewhere where there's sunshine and fun. No. No. Goodbye, Henry. Don't go. I'm sorry, Henry. Please. I'll do anything you want, only please. Don't go. There's no risk, Henry. No danger to you. You always hated that job in the bank. Frank will do it all. And afterwards, we can get married. I love you, Henry. Do you? You want me to prove it? Why didn't you tell me you were going to stay out all night? Frank, 
He's gonna do it, we'll be rich. Fact, look at me. Fact, this... Last night meant nothing to me. Nothing. I love you, Frank. Only you. You're the only man I'll ever love as long as I live. <laughs> Henry, are you ill? Oh, uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Hastings. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, there's a, there's a shipment due at King's Cross on Tuesday at 9.37 p.m. You'll have to meet it. You know, the usual drill. All right? Yes, yes, all right. Henry coming here is crazy with the coppers watching the building. Now don't be stupid. There are a hundred flats in this block. The coppers are watching you, nobody else. I feel like giving the whole thing up. Now take it easy. I'll be nice to him. You're my brother, remember? Sure, sure. Hello, Henry. Hello. Come in. Henry, this is my brother Frank. Henry Waldo. How do you do? Hello, Henry. I, um, uh, I'm very glad to meet you. Yeah, same here, same here. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I suppose Lolo's told you. Yes, and he's thrilled, aren't you, Frank? Yes, well, it's your business. If you want to get married, it's all right by me. Well, I'm very glad. Well, I thought you might have objections. No, forget it. Perhaps we should get down to business. Sit down, Henry. Well, I have thought it over very carefully. At first, I thought it was impossible. But it isn't, actually. The security arrangements are really rather silly when you come to think of it. Come on, get to the point. There's a shipment of used five and one pound notes arriving at King's Cross Station next Tuesday night. What about guards? Uh, four at the station and three in the van and me. You? What, you mean you'll be in the van? Oh, yes. I know the exact route it'll take. Oh, you do? Oh, yes, they... they trust me with that information. How much will there be, Henry? £416,000. It's four days since Sammy got knifed. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, what are we going to do about it? Except sit around on the backside like a lot of idiots. We move when I'm ready. And it won't be any tuppany hate you rumble, either. I've got a job lined up that'll make your hair go grey. Then tell us about it. No, no. No, no. It won't work here, baby. We've got the police sitting on our necks. The Blake's boys are laying for us. And the armored van goes right through the middle of Blake's territory. It won't work. Frank, with the two gangs on the verge of all-out war and the police watching us, we got it made. What are you talking about? Well, if you've got the sense to take advantage of it, this is a blessing in disguise. I just don't get it. Not a peep out of Frank Romano. Why? Because he's chicken. He has thought he'd have put up some kind of a fight. Yeah, he's here. Who wants him? Hold on, I'll ask him. Hey, Jerry. Guess who? Frank Romano. How about that? <coughs> yeah. Hello, Jerry. Now listen. Listen, I want to speak to you. I'll, I'll explain when I see you. Yeah. How about meeting me in um, Weller's Warehouse? Weller's Warehouse. In, say, what, about uh, ten minutes? Right. Ten minutes. Well, what did he want? He wants to meet me. What for? Is he going to pack it in? No. Are you going to meet him? Weller's Warehouse. You two are coming with me.
Hello, Jerry. I've got a proposition for you. Yeah. I think we should amalgamate. Why? Because we could operate big instead of this tuppany of protection racket. I mean, after all the share outs, what do you got left, eh? That depends. I'm onto something big, Jerry. Really big. How big? 400,000 quid. Go on. I need your help, Jerry. We gotta work together as partners. What are the details? Now, just a minute. Now, first of all, we split it down the middle. 200,000 quid each. Don't you agree with that? Hmm? Just had a report from Brownie. It seems that Jerry Blake and Frank Romano had a director's meeting. Oh? Yeah, a warehouse in Weymouth Street. Very peaceful and very suspicious. Brownie thinks they're planning a punch up. You better go down there and have a word with him, David. Right away. A fake rumble. That's right. No knives, no coshes, no chains. All you gotta do is to make it look good and sound good. Jerry, I don't get it. This deal is so big. I, I can't tell you anymore. Just trust me, right? All right, all right, I know it sounds crazy. The Blake boys have been asking for it for a long time. Duke! Just one more word and you're out. Do you understand that? I didn't mean anything, Frank. Well, then shut up. Now, this is a fake rumble, and I mean fake. Weasel. Yeah, Frank? You spread the word to the boys in blue. Tonight, Weller's Warehouse, there's a big rumble between the Romano gang and the Blake boys. Right, get going. Sure thing, Frank. <laughs> You should know something. I should know a lot of things. Try me. It's going to be a rumble. Big one. The Romano gang and the Blake boys tonight. Weller's Warehouse. In the warehouse? Yeah. Here. Stop. There's something behind this, David. I know. That tip-off was too... Obviously deliberate. You think it's a cover of some sort? Positive. But a cover for what? See that Browning has all the men he needs. Both clubs still being watched? Yes, and Romano and Blake being tailed. Round the clock. Well, we'll get down the early tonight and see what's really going on. Everything all right, Henry? Uh, oh, uh, yes, sir. Let me see. It's three o'clock. You may leave now, if you wish, uh, since you've that shipment to meet tonight. Yes, all right, sir. Thank I you. Don't... Anything new? Romano and his wife are both at home. All right. Well, I'll get off. There's some tea. Pack it off for now. Okay. What do you mean you can't go through with it? Well, look, Mr. Romano, it's just the dad. It's all planned. We've been over it a dozen times. Lolo's going to be waiting in the car. We got you an American passport. We do the job at 10. We're on the cargo boat by 11.30. I can't fail. Now, don't worry, Henry. Well, no, it's just that I can't help feeling uncertain. Just meet that shipment. Relax, Henry. You better go out the back way. The coppers are watching the building. They're watching you, not him. Go out the back way just the same. All right, come on, Henry. I'll show you. It's all right. Well, goodbye then, Mr. Romano. I'll see you later then. Sure, Henry. Now, don't worry. In a few more hours, we'll all be rich. Thanks. 
I'll be right over. Goodbye. Oh. Well, that's a funny one. What? Frank Romano's wife playing footsie with a man called Henry Walder. The central record something on it? No, there's no record. They're checking further. It's about time we got started. Colonel, sir. Not exactly where you said. Got the keys? Great, isn't it? <laughs> oh, but well as warehouse is crawling with blue bottles. All right, Lanny, we'll keep checking, will you? I am. I sent a man down to Henry Waldo's flat to ask a few questions. All right, then keep in touch with you. Evening, sir. Good evening, Browning. Anything happened? Nothing. I didn't expect you in person. Your appeal for men touched my heart. Hey, Jerry. Yeah, the boys are talking. They're sort of, um... Well, look, they want to know exactly what's going on. All they're going to know is that there's a hijacking involved, that's all. But what? Cigarettes? Booze? The fewer people know about it, the better. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> Has anybody got anything to say? Hey! <coughs> eh? Right! You do exactly what I told you! You go to Weller's Warehouse. The Romano gang will be there. And a signal from me to start the fight, but you don't hurt anybody. <laughs> You lot will have a slice of the biggest job we've ever pulled, so don't lose it. What have they got in there? Floor show? I don't know. Usually by this time they're pretty drunk and pretty nasty. I've got a funny feeling we're being had. I wonder how they get along without me. Do you care? Not a bit, no. We're starting new tonight. First time. First time you're off that train's tuned about now. Speak with the key. Yeah. Checked out and we've got reinforcements standing by. We better get over there. Anything you want, Waldo? We've checked on his home. He's not there. Oh, well, we've found out he's employed at the head office of the City and Colonial Bank. The City and Colonial Bank? Yes, sir. Look, get onto the bank security department. Now, Jim Marsh is the fellow to deal with. Try him at home. Get back to me as fast as you can. The City and Colonial Bank? We're just not in the right place. on the phone until Lemmy has something to report from Jim Marshall. Right.
What the devil are they doing in there? Well, it's your division. You think we should just round up the lot and sling them into jail for trespassing? Oh, let's wait. It's a cover for something. Finally caught up with Jim Marshall. An armored car left King's Cross ten minutes ago carrying 400,000 pounds. Henry Wall is riding in it. This is it. Okay, back up here. should be here by now. Stop all this hating, David. You're asking me, sir. I suppose you just gotta keep on trying, eh? 